Hi, this is Steve, K-A-B-Z. And uh, I'm not really a QRP guy, but I am a CW guy. And I saw this uh, little QRP radio kit. It's from QRP Labs. It's called the QCX. And it just has a ton of features. Uh, it's very inexpensive, uh, under $50. But it doesn't come with an enclosure. They do have an enclosure on the website that you can order if you want. But it's... It seems like it's rarely available, and it's very expensive, and they hold up shipment of the radio until the enclosure is available. And that didn't really excite me. So I looked online, and I saw that Mike, W4MHZ, makes enclosures for this radio with a 3D printer. So I uh, checked it out, and uh, it's very inexpensive. Uh, Mike charges $25 at this time, plus $5 shipping. For another five dollars, he'll send you a call sign uh, uh, decal that uh, you can put on the enclosure. I didn't order the decal, and from the time I ordered it until it arrived at the house, it was three days. So it came very quickly. Uh, he accepts payment via PayPal, and I'll have a description of how to get more information or how to contact Mike in the uh, description of this video. But this enclosure comes with the, the power pole connections. It's all cut out and ready for the uh, transceiver. Now you can't use the knobs. There are two knobs on the transceiver. You can't use those knobs in this enclosure because uh, you need knobs of a different height. So Mike also makes the knobs and they are the correct height. So when, it, when it's in the enclosure, these knobs uh, look identical. Although one extends further down inside the enclosure than the other. Uh, there also has to be two extensions for the other push buttons. And Mike has those taped inside the enclosure. Now they just fit in there loose. Uh, that's the uh, top half of the enclosure and uh, you lay that face down on the desk and then put uh, the uh, transceiver in the enclosure face down. He also sends two sets of power pole connectors with the kit. Uh, one set can be used inside the enclosure to make the connection, and the other set can be used with your power cord or power cabling uh, to connect to the transceiver. And those power pole connectors lock together, which makes it very handy. Now Mike stresses in the instructions not to force the transceiver into the enclosure. Set it in carefully. Take your time. Be methodical. Don't be in a hurry. Uh, the case is turned face down on the desk. Uh, and also you do, you do have to remove the knobs that came with the transceiver. Uh, they have lock screws on those knobs. So you need a little miniature screwdriver set to take those off. So we'll take the knobs off that came with the transceiver and see how it fits inside the uh, top half of the enclosure. I also removed the, uh, the nut and lock washer on the antenna jack to get that out of the way. and then do a trial fit in the top half of the enclosure. Now Mike did say that these may not fit perfectly right out of the box. And mine in fact didn't. The antenna jack didn't fit down in the notch in the enclosure. And the opening for the key jack for the paddles had to be enlarged also. Now Mike mentions you can use a very sharp razor knife like an X-Acto knife or a rotary tool. In my case I'm using a rotary tool here. Uh, but go slowly and very carefully. Don't be in a hurry. Just remove a little bit of material. Double check the fit. And if you need to continue to remove a little bit of material. And here I'm using the uh, razor knife to remove the slag that is kind of created uh, from using the rotary tool. I also used a large round pencil and I wrapped some sandpaper around the pencil and I used that to enlarge the notches for the key jack. So my key jack 
would fit all the way into the jack. The, uh, the key jack on the circuit board doesn't extend outside of the enclosure. So the hole needs to be big enough for the jack to fit through the hole to fit all the way completely into the jack. Once it's fit in, check and make sure that everything lines up. Put the top half of the enclosure on, make sure you get a good fit. And go all the way around and check the seam. Make sure that uh, you're not having to use excessive force to close that seam. If you do, then something still needs adjusted. So take your time. Be methodical. You can see all the material there I had to remove on a couple different locations on the uh, enclosure. Next thing to do is get your power cord ready. Now it does come with two power pole connectors, but it doesn't come with any cable. Uh, this is cable that I happen to have on hand. So I'm going to use that for the power pole connection uh, for inside the radio. And these, this particular cable was pre-stripped and pre-tinned. So all I had to do was crimp it on the power pole connections. And I also solder them. I don't just uh, go with a crimp on connection. I like, uh, like to solder those connections also. I've had some of those slip out when I thought they were crimped on securely. So we're going to put a little solder on those to make sure they don't slip out of those connections. And if you haven't worked with power poles uh, before, they can be a little confusing at first until you see exactly how they fit in. Um, they have to be in the correct position or they won't snap into the connector. Uh, I use a little miniature screwdriver. Once they're in there, I can shove the screwdriver into the uh, power pole connection that we soldered on and snap it up into position. When it's snapped into position, it won't come back out. Uh, at least not easily. So you don't have to worry about the wires falling out of the power pole connection, especially if you soldered them in and get them snapped in correctly. Now we snap this into the uh, into the top half of the enclosure and I didn't show it in the video but I tried to fit that together and then uh, the uh, circuit board has some screw lugs that the power wires go into but the wires ha would have to go between the circuit board and the enclosure and uh, that didn't work. Uh, it was too tight a squeeze so what I'm doing here is I'm stripping a little bit of wire off each end of the connection that goes to the power pole, each end of the wires that go to the power pole connection, and I'm going to tin that, and then I'm going to solder it to the positive and negative pads on the solder side of the circuit board. There's pretty good size uh, solder connections there where the power connector is soldered into the circuit board. So once those ends of that uh, power cable are tinned, just hold it down on those pads and apply some heat with a soldering iron and the solder from the tinned wires will flow together with the pads on the circuit board and you've got a nice connection there. And now I don't have to worry about squeezing the wires in between the circuit board and the enclosure to fit them into those uh, tightened down screw lugs on the component side of the circuit board. Now I don't have a lot of wire here to work with, so it's a little tricky getting the power pole connection back into the uh, socket that it sets in on the bottom half of the enclosure. Once you get it close to being in position, you can hold it with one hand, use a little miniature screwdriver and lift up on it from the outside of the circuit board and it snaps right into position. Make sure everything still fits correctly, that one, none of the uh, push button extensions fell out of place or that it, make sure nothing's misaligned before we put the two halves of the enclosure together. Make sure that seam fits nicely all the way around without having to use excessive force to close that seam where the two halves come together.
checked and made sure the push button still uh, still functioned okay. And Mike again mentions in the instructions, don't use excessive force screwing these screws together. Just screw them down until they're snug and then check and make sure that the case is being held together securely. And in my case, on one or two of the screws, I had to give them another little bit of a turn or two to make sure that seam uh, held nice and tight. All the controls still seem to work okay. Now it's time to put the knobs on. Taller of the two knobs goes on the left, and that's just a round shafted knob, so there's you don't have to worry about any particular orientation when you put that knob on. The other knob has a uh, has a flatted side to the shaft so you need to look inside the knob you're going to put on it make sure you orient that uh, flat side up against the flat side of the shaft push it into position and even though these knobs are different height they extend the same distance outside of the enclosure so they appear to be the same height the height difference uh, is only inside of the enclosure and now we want to apply power and make sure all of the functions still work. Uh, before that, we're going to put the lock washer and the nut back on the uh, antenna jack. Tightened it hand tight and then just gave it a little bit of a tightening with a wrench. And I have a 12 volt bench power supply here, so we're going to plug it in and make sure that uh, it powers up. For feet on the bottom of this, it didn't come with feet uh, for the cabinet, but I I have a whole uh, whole bag full of uh, rubber grommets. So I found four nicely sized grommets, just held them on the bottom of the cabinet and glued them on with hot glue right in the center part of the uh, grommet. And they make make a nice little four feet. They're rubbery. They keep it from sliding around on the table surface. So I want to go through all of the controls, make sure something didn't get misaligned, maybe uh, something uh, pulled loose on a cold solder joint with the torquing on the circuit board, make sure all of the functions appear to work correctly. I wish this camera picked up the display a little better. Now we're going to, uh, in the next video, we're going we're gonna to put this little radio through its paces. I've already used it uh, uh, a fair amount. I've had it a little over a week. Uh, before I got the enclosure, so I used it on the air and I was very surprised, pleasantly surprised with how well this radio performs. Dual VFOs, RIT function, uh, memory keyer, iambic key, straight key, uh, two VFOs, you can work split, not that you do that a whole lot QRP, but it, it's possible. But we're going to do some videos uh, showing this thing on the air and uh, not just show you how to run through the menus and uh, we're going to, uh, we're radio operators here so <laughs> this isn't just a set on the shelf. This thing is going to be on the air. Everything seems to be working. There's the VFOA and VFOB. So uh, a lot of thanks to Mike for making this nice little enclosure. Uh, information on how to contact Mike, if you're interested, will be in the description. Uh, he'll provide them in what, one of several colors uh, and with a call sign nameplate if you like. So thanks for watching, and uh, this makes a nice little enclosure for your QCX QRP radio. Thank you.